Hey everyone, this is the director and writer of Danganronpa F Shattered Hope, and I've had some time to relax, and since I've been wanting to make this video on the side for quite some time now, I figured now is the best time to make it. In this video, we'll be discussing how to write a Fangan. Now, I'm by no means an expert, but if you are interested to learn a few things, stick around as I'll be using some of the things I've learnt on my writing English course to guide you. I'll go through 10 things that are important in script writing in any form that will be important for your fangan. Throughout, I'll be using the information provided to us by Egri in The Art of Dramatic Writing, a fantastic book by the way, and Robert McKee, a screenwriter who has taught many and continues to teach across the globe. All in all, I've not really seen these types of videos around, so if it helps you, that's awesome. Before you commence the sacrifice game, you must ask yourself a question. What would you do if everything you came to know and love was taken from you? Okay, so the first aspect of writing I want to discuss is coming up with a premise. The premise comes into the category of theme, thesis, root idea, goal, aim, etc, etc. The premise is something which you'll see in most stories. It is the message it is trying to convey to its audience. An example comes in the form of King Lear, a story where a king's trust in his two daughters is misplaced when they remove his authority, degrade him, and he dies a broken man. The premise, therefore, would be blind trust leads to destruction. Another example from my favourite Disney film, The Lion King, might be selfish desire brings about suffering. Simba's desire to visit the elephant graveyard, Scar being defeated after usurping the kingdom from Mufasa. An example from Danganronpa 1 is simple, hope conquers despair. Do you see what I mean? Each story is attempting to convey a message to its audience. It may not be what makes up the entire structure of the plot, but it sure as hell has great importance. So have a think. What do you want to say in your story? Because as Robert McKee tells us, the greatest screenwriters are people that have something to say. Maybe you're asking yourself how you can go about this. Well, if so, don't worry. We have all consumed media in some sense, right? Well, I want you to think hard about a subject. Maybe you want to spread a good message, that through facing the demons inside of yourself, you are able to become the person you always wanted to be. Hey, look everyone. Ah, I knew I sent someone else. Oh, welcome to the gang, stranger. Another slender one? I should have anticipated as much. I like this one. He's cute. So you have that premise ready to go, and you might be asking yourself, where do I go next? Well, that's easy, and it's a fun step. This is character. Character, as Egri describes, is the fundamental material we are all forced to work with, so we must know the character as thoroughly as possible. When crafting a character in a fangan, I want you to please forget all of that ultimate nonsense. You may think it's important from the get-go, but it's not. The talent of a character makes up as little as 5% of what that character has to offer. Each character is rich with backstory, class, conflict, and structure. Now this word structure is key to your crafting of a well thought out character. Let's take what Egri calls the bone structure of a character and delve into how to write a character from scratch. First we have the physiology of our character. His or her sex, age, height, weight, the colour of their eyes, hair, skin, posture, appearance, defects and potential hereditary elements. So think. How does my character look? How do they stand? Do they slouch? Stand upright? 
Do they have any diseases that causes a shift in appearance? Do they carry something hereditary? All of this is vital when thinking of how a character is going to look. And guess what? The way they look has everything to do with who they are as people. Everything. Are they a laid-back character who sports a casual attire? Are they a hard worker who sports a suit? Have a think. Next is the sociology of our character. What class are they? Upper? Middle? Lower? Where were they educated? And no, I don't mean Hope's Peak. If you're writing in the canon universe, I'm talking before all of that. Did they get good marks? Did the teacher think of them as nuisances? What were their favourite subjects? What were their least favourite subjects? How was their home life? Did their parents have a good income? Are they still around? If so, what are their parents' vices? Do they drink a lot? Are they drug abusers? Or are they perfectly normal parents? Is your character single or in a relationship? Do they have any sort of religion? What's their race? What's their nationality? What is their place in their community of group of friends? A leader? A sidekick? Did they attend school clubs, sports activities? Are they interested in politics? What are their hobbies? Reading, horse riding, gaming? Finally, we have psychology. What are their moral standards? Do they believe in second chances, for example? What is their desire? Now we'll talk about this later. Do they have anything which frustrates them about others? What's their temperament? Is it optimistic? Pessimistic? Are they extroverted? Introverted? Now, do you see why I said to forget all of that talent business? It's a lot to think about, isn't it? It's simply not enough to slap a talent on someone, give them a certain quirk or trope and call it a day. These are people. And people have stories. Now, once this is done, give them that talent and you can work from there. Do you guys think they'll have... Ugh, shut up already. I beg of you! Um... Are you nuts? Now that you have your character all neatly wrapped up along with a neat premise and it's all ready to be thrown onto paper, you're probably thinking it's time to get writing, right? Wrong. Remember how I mentioned desire before? Let's discuss this a bit more. Every character has a goal in life. If you think to yourself, oh, my character's already an ultimate, they've already achieved their goal. Well then it's time to cut that character from your cast. Whether you are watching this as a young person with dreams, or as an older person who's got a sweet gig in a family, you still crave something. It can be as small as getting a dog, ordering takeaway for dinner, making amends with your grandma who fell out with you last week, or as grand as becoming a gentleman. Hmm, who could that be? They could wish to be a rock star, to gain true strength of heart like the person they killed, wish to impress Junko herself. Now there are many, many desires throughout the cast of Danganronpa, and it's your job to come up with some of yours. Whether they achieve their goals or not is not important. Sometimes they can in the most beautiful of ways, like Kaito going to space, and for others they can be shattered when they are caught in an act of murder like Celeste. Here's some advice, cutie. Choose your words more carefully next time. Otherwise, we might assume you're trying to spread distrust amongst the group, okay? You're almost there. You're almost ready to bring your characters to the page. So next, we have character growth. Any type of character that does not undergo change is flawed, point blank. If a character is placed, especially into the realm of Danganronpa, they should change. Whether that's for the better or worse is up to you to decide. Think, does your character begin the story with a positive outlook, which shifts to a terrified panic, aka Sayaka? Three, two, I... 
one. I can't do it. The protagonist, according to Webster's Dictionary, is one who takes the lead in any movement or cause. And with this, it's true that anyone who opposes the protagonist as an opposition figure is, by all means, an antagonist. Without the main character, there is no story to be had. The pivotal character allows the story to move forward through conflict. They tackle those who cause distress amongst a group. They fight back against the opposition in the audience's stead. Now that's not to say a pivotal character enters the story and is ready to tackle all obstacles. No. A protagonist becomes so because they are forced by circumstances. Why, that's obvious, isn't it? Now, it's my turn to take the stage. Anyone who opposes our hero with the unrelenting drive is our antagonist through and through. They are cunning to the point that our protagonist must exert all of their being in hopes of defeating them. If for any reason our antagonist is unable to do this, they are not worthy of being placed into this role. Go back to the drawing board. There has to be an even match. An attack, if you will, that is countered and then countered again. Nagito and Kokichi are great examples. Uh, silly me! <laughs> I must be losing it. Whew. Stuffed animals don't talk. <laughs> well, that's rude. Who said I'm stuffed? What the fuck? Ah, why are we yelling? Ha! Ah, I see you too clear out the lungs by yelling. Then allow me to join you, friends. Ah! Yell at me like that one day, big boy. I love verbal abuse. Ugh, you guys are loud. I shouldn't have cleaned out my ears this morning. I prefer the bear already. Bear? Where is it? Somebody grab a gun! No worries, Bear! I don't need guns! I'll take care of the bear for you! Wait, what? I take it back. You're all idiots. When writing your characters, it's very important to give them solid orchestration. This means every character must be different in their own way. They must be raised differently, speak differently, have a different presence than the others. By doing this, the conflict between the characters will come naturally. For something like Danganronpa with such a large cast, you'll need multiple conflicts to be happening to keep things interesting, to keep it engaging. Hyoko needed to dislike Mikan. Kaito needed to dislike Kokichi. The list goes on, and the protagonist and antagonist fall into this category too. This is our unity of oppositions. A unity of opposites is where two characters are so different that they cannot, will not, come to an understanding of one another until one is soundly defeated. This can only be broken beforehand if a dominant trait in one side is completely and utterly changed. McKee talks about the diminishing returns. This term is simple. When writing, think to yourself, are you getting where you need to be in a scene in a timely manner, or are you delaying the conversation? It might be realistic, but is it engaging? Here is an example of this delay in action. Character A, hey, leave me alone. Character B, no, I need to talk with you. Character A, but I don't want to talk with you. Character B, yes, but I really need to, it's important. Character A, I doubt it, just leave me be. Character B, I can't. Is that engaging? No, it's not. So make sure to think carefully about repetition when you write. Damn. Three. Boop, 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 boop. Sorry, I can't stop it now. Two. 
Hey, you! Get out of the way! For a fangan, whether it be in the form of a game, writing, or web series, you need to hook your audience. How do you go about that? Well, first off, I want you to try not to take too much inspiration from the other games when beginning your story. The, hi, I'm the ultimate so-and-so and I'm about to start school today, is not needed. Throw your audience something new, something fresh, to entice them to stick around. Remember that those watching your story are fans of the video games. They know what to expect, so break those expectations in the best and most creative way possible. If you manage to keep your audience on their toes, you are doing something right. Finally, my last tip for you guys is to have fun. Don't let writing a fangan stress you out too much. Remember, this is something you're doing in your spare time, and what you're writing is out of love and passion for both writing itself and for Danganronpa. All in all, I hope these tips helped you. Feel free to do further research on the topic of writing, as there is still a lot to cover. But overall, thank you so, so much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all next time.